What's up you guys? It's Sarah. How you doing? Happy Thursday! It is almost the weekend which means I have another book to review for you guys. Today I am talking about Beach Read by Emily Henry and if you don't know who Emily Henry is she is the author of People We Meet on Vacation which I just reviewed and I will link that book talk in the description down below for you so you can go check that out. And if you want to talk about Beach Read with me you can stick around. I do have a few controversial opinions on this book so I'm just going to give a quick summary and dive into my thoughts on it. So for those of you who don't know what Beach Read is about, it is about this girl, her name is January, and her father has recently passed, and a woman shows up to her father's funeral who she doesn't know and comes to find out that this woman is her father's mistress, and her father has been having an affair on January's mother for most of January's life. And this sparks January to go up to the lake house, which is in up north Michigan. The house is on Lake Michigan, and it's also the house that her father shared with his mistress, but for some reason he left it to his daughter January. And she goes up there to work on her book. She is a writer and she is running out of money and she hasn't written a book in a while and her agent's on her to get a new copy of a manuscript out. So she goes up to this lake house to finish working on her novel and to find some closure with her dad. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can go check out Beach Read and come back when you've read the book. But full disclosure for me, I did not love this book, so I would not highly recommend you go read it and come back. I would recommend you just kind of stick around if you're okay with being spoiled. So you can hear my thoughts on it and then you can decide for yourself if you want to go read Beach Read. So I am going to talk about spoilers now, so if you don't want to be spoiled, come back after you've read the book. So now I'm going to talk about all things spoilers in Beach Read, but before I do, if you're new here, click that subscribe button because I make new videos every Thursday and I would love for you to come hang out with me. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to click that thumbs up button, show your love and support, I would really appreciate it as well. Alright, so Beach Read. First, let's talk about the title because I'm very confused. I don't really get why this is called Beach Read. I can see where the author was going, but to me, it's a bit of a stretch. Because first of all, I don't even think this book takes place during the summer because there are times when it's talking about rainy and wet and the lake is frozen, which, by the way, Lake Michigan doesn't get frozen. Hi, I live in Michigan. So that kind of bothered me just as a Michigander, but it's fine. There are times where there's ice on the lake, but like, the waves, there was a passage in there about how the waves froze and how it's beautiful and I was like, well, that doesn't happen. You can't walk across Lake Michigan when it freezes. It's huge. It's like an ocean, but I digress. And the other thing is our character's name is January and the book is called Beach Read. Like you can't have a summer vibing book with like people tanning and laying on the beach on the cover and then have our main character be named after a winter month. Like that doesn't line up. And the whole feel of the book didn't line up with a beach read book. When I pick up beach read, I think it's going to be a cute summer romance with like beaches and beach parties and high school and young love. And that's just not what this was. It was colder weather and moody characters and death and cheating and figuring out if love is really dead for our main character or not as she tries to rediscover love because she's lost all of her rose-colored glasses that told her the world was a beautiful place with lots of love and she's trying to go find that and Beach Read just does not capture that to me at all. So that was an interesting title change and for me it set up kind of an awkward transition as I realized what this book was actually about and like the mood of the book just didn't match the title or the cover so that was odd to me. That didn't really set the book up for success in my eyes but we'll continue down the things I did not love about this book. In addition to the fact that the name January does not match the title Beach Read, I just don't like the name January in general. I have an issue with authors who go to great lengths to try to make their character's name unique and different, especially when it's not a dystopian and there's no real need for her name to be unique and different. And her name is January. It's after a month that is not a month that's commonly a name. Why is her name January? And also she goes by January. She doesn't even have a nickname like Jan. No, just, she just goes by January. Let's talk about our other main character named Gus. Gus is disheveled and dark and bedhead, messy, grumpy neighbor and they have this enemies to lovers romance and let me tell you it was the most poorly executed enemies to lovers romance that I have ever seen. I know that book talk classifies this as a sort of enemies to lovers. I would not. To me enemies to lovers is Anthony Bridgerton and Kate Sharma or Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy. Like not these people. 
Gus is January's annoying neighbor and sort of enemy from college who kind of semi-danced like romantically at a party like that's as far as it went kind of a hookup at a party thing but that's as far as it went and then he insulted her writing ability and she never let that go and then they reunite in this Michigan town and she pretends like she doesn't remember him even though part of her fuel for writing a book is this guy which I've heard some people say is not realistic like she should get over it it was just some guy she met in college but to be fair to give the author a bone here I think that we all have things in our lives that don't necessarily make sense for why we hold on to them but we still do and we still let them drive us so that's fine I didn't have a problem with the fact that she was holding on to Gus from college especially when it sounds like her life is pretty boring otherwise but here's the thing I just didn't like Gus he's her grumpy neighbor and they both write together after they form an un likely bond and friendship and to be honest I would have loved if it was just kind of like a friendship and there was another romance character for January because I didn't want Gus to be her Romeo I just didn't feel the chemistry between them and Gus isn't really a romance person and this whole thing with January and Gus's deal is that they try to switch genres and write what the other person writes about and so they're learning about this other person's John Run, so January takes Gus out on all these like romance date things and she's questioning herself whether love is real but she's still trying to convince Gus that it is. Gus takes her to these cult survivor interviews but what's confusing is the cult survival research it never came back around like I don't think it was actually incorporated in either of their books because she wrote about a circus and he wrote about lovers although was his about a cult I don't remember actually now that I'm saying it but either way I didn't feel like the cult research connected with January enough when it was supposed to be her lesson so eh, that kind of bothered me and of course we have this cliche Gus doesn't believe in romance and he's this tortured poet soul but guess what he once was married and got his heart broken and that's why he doesn't believe in love <sighs> That is literally every brooding man who doesn't believe in love cliche ever. So let's talk about January and her relationship with her dad. So January has all this pent up frustration at her dad and rightly so, that makes sense. And she won't even talk to her dad's mistress, which again, rightly so, I get it. But at the end, the mistress shows up like begging January to just talk to her and figure it out. And it's revealed that January never read this letter that her dad gave her, which we knew. But then in the letter, it's revealed that he left her more letters. Like every year on her birthday, he wrote her a letter, which again, kind of cliche, right? I see this on Pinterest all the time like when your child is born create an email account for them and every year email them on their birthday so that when they turn 18 you can send them their email password and they can read all of these notes from you like no offense your child doesn't care and January was really touched like oh he I guess he does love me and whatever but like we always kind of knew he loved you he left his house to you I know you might not have known he loved you but to me I felt like we needed something stronger or we needed her to realize like hey my dad was kind of a bad person for cheating on my mom and there's nothing I can do about that so I need to let that go but instead it was just kind of like he wrote me all these letters I guess he really does love me and then she randomly called her mom and they made up so that felt a bit weak to me and also too while she's reading her dad's letters she has this thought like oh my gosh my dad ended up doing with this mistress what I'm kind of doing with Gus because Gus is still technically married and then I got excited because I was like oh so this is where we're going with this this is great we're gonna have this whole life lesson here about how Gus is actually still married and maybe that's not the right thing for January to be doing by going off into the sunset with Gus maybe he needs to figure out things with his wife but they had villainized Gus's wife so that wasn't going to work and that's not the direction they went and so it was just kind of this misplaced thought like January trying to empathize with her dad for cheating on her mom because January is kind of doing the exact same thing with Gus but then the whole point of the book was she was hurt by her dad for having this affair with her mom and it's not like they were trying to say that the affair was justified so it was just kind of randomly thrown in there and then never like explored and the lesson was never learned and it bothered me because I'm a big like truth prevails and goodness prevails and if goodness doesn't prevail that's fine but we have to learn the lesson and we have to talk about why not to mention the fact that January and Gus are definitely breaking up after this book like these characters 
they're definitely breaking up. Yeah, and that's all I have to say on Beach Read. What did you think of Beach Read? Tell me in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Sorry I kind of went on a rant there, but when I don't like a book, I really like to explain why so I can put my thoughts out there and then see what other people think. So tell me what you thought in the comments. Would love to hear from you. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button because I make new videos every Thursday. And if you want to follow me over on social media, on Instagram, it is at the underscore writing corner. And if you want to follow me on either Twitter or TikTok, it is at Sarah M. Caroline, and that's Sarah with an H. And I will put all those links for you in the description down below, including my review on people we meet on vacation, if you want to check all of those out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great Thursday, a great Friday, and a great weekend. Bye!